Warning, this video may not be for you. But if you're having trouble getting your significant other on board the cruising lifestyle, this video is for you specifically. There's a possibility, maybe even a likelihood, you've been approaching this all wrong. So we're gonna shift the mentality completely, give you some tools to get it done. It's the 10 year anniversary of Get Her On Board. Can't believe I wrote that book 10 years ago or so, but the ideas, they still hold up. You can check it out on Amazon. The review is pretty good. And. I have a few new tips to add as well. So, hope you like this video. Let's get started. Looks good, huh? Yeah, I think it looks good on this wall. No, 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 I mean, we could be on there. No, you can live on, you can live on a boat. What? Oh, this one, this one is perfect. You're gonna love this one. Is there room on the boat for my garden? What are you reading? We can totally <laughs> afford it if we sell the house. Oh, check it out. This one, it's perfect. Does it have a bathtub? Uh, honey, you're gonna love this one. Where is the kitchen? But I don't see where the dishwasher is and, and well, where's the counter no, space? I'll, I'll do the dishes. Oh, you'll do the dishes. <laughs> Chances are, if you've got the cruising dream and she doesn't, you've been focusing a lot on boats. Let's forget about the boat for a little bit. You need to wind it back and think of big picture. This is about adventure. It's about stepping out of your routine, your rut, your rat race, whatever you want to call it, and doing something new. Yeah, it can be overwhelming if you've got the cruising dream to present your wife, your girlfriend, your significant, uh, let's just say wife. wife. Yeah. If you present your wife with a whole bunch of boats and this one's got this thing and this one's this long and this one costs this much money, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. Do we even want to go on an adventure? Yeah. That means getting out of our jobs, maybe getting out of our house and doing something new. Let's start with that. So why would you want to go on an adventure? Things are going well. You've got the house, you're comfortable, things you feel safe. Yeah, maybe successful, but likely there's a bit of a routine that you've settled into. And this is about stepping out of that routine completely, new challenges, new goals, and the sense of accomplishment that you get as you learn new things. And I think also that's really important in busy modern life, you may have kind of squashed some of those things that you're really interested in that take time, that take space in nature to you know develop that creativity. So that's another thing you can focus on about the adventure. So honey, what do you think about stepping out of the routine and doing something different? Notice I didn't even mention about it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that sounds kind of fun, different, but what are we talking about here? We're gonna sail around the world. We're gonna disappear forever. What? That's crazy. What we need to do is we need to set a limited time frame. Ambiguity can be really, really scary for folks. So if you say, let's set off and see what happens, that can be extra spooky. But if you say, well, what if we took off six months or a year. Let's call it a sabbatical. Yeah, we can keep the house even and sure. rent it out. Why not? That sounds doable. That'd be really fun. I could see that would be so exciting to plan. Focus on the sense of urgency that life really is a one-way trip. It's short and none of us know how long we have. For me, seeing my dad and my stepfather pass suddenly in their 50s really made me wake up and realize hey, what is it that I wanna do? What do I love to do? And one of the things is, is be outside in nature as much as possible. I love just being, seeing the sunrises and hearing the birds and being on the water. It really calms me and makes me feel alive. If you're still having troubles getting your wife or significant on board after you've talked about these shared values and about how time is short, it may be time to sample the goods. YouTube's great, but there's really no substitute for getting out there and doing it yourself. So we'd suggest that you book a charter. And I know it looks very expensive, but if you're having trouble getting the stream going, going down to the British Virgin Islands or the Bahamas or Belize or even Europe, Croatia, booking a boat maybe similar to the one that you want to buy and going out for a week, even with a captain who can take the stress off of navigation, could be a big help in lighting that fire. So you had a really good time on the charter. She loved it. 
but she still has all these fears like being on the ocean at night being offshore being in a storm i mean what do you do to answer those fears whatever you do don't ignore her fears or say something like oh we'll figure it out along the way that is not a good response you really have to face fear head on and the truth is that she's right the ocean is a scary place it's a hostile environment it can be potentially dangerous but what we can do is we can educate education and experience will pretty much melt away fears because once you've been out and learned how to deal with a particular situation you'll realize most of the time there's really nothing to fear so you don't have a boat how can you get experience and how can you get educated there's a couple things you can do take classes and preferably not from you what are you saying are you saying i can't teach you on our boat you are actually a really good teacher you're helping a lot of people out there and on youtube but honestly it's just too there's too much emotion going on between the husband and wife and it really helps if she can just be in an objective situation and learn from somebody that she doesn't have to go home with at night. Well, hopefully you're not going home with them. <laughs> I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You know the best kind of boat? <laughs> Somebody else's, <laughs> especially when you're learning. So another option is to go crew on somebody else's boat. And I suggest being crew together on someone else's boat and then also doing it separately. I took a boat down from San Francisco to Mexico with a couple and I learned volumes about what other captains are like and how to handle smoking the engine in the middle of the night. It was so good for my self-confidence to do that on my own without Nick. Well, that's quite an exhaustive list. Where are we? <laughs> are we at the end yet? All right. So you went through, it's an adventure, life is short, and she's still reticent. Here's what you do. Just get a pocket cruiser. In fact, go down to your local marina and ask the dock master, has anybody stopped paying their slip fees? We met somebody just the other night who got a free boat that way, a 25 foot boat. Something that you can handle on your own, that you can work on, you can sail, you can have the adventure, and hey, she might come down for a day sail. You never know. You're still not making any progress. Don't give up completely. You can still embody the cruiser spirit without the boat and without taking off because a lot of this transfers into normal life. The cruiser spirit. I like that. Yeah, the cruising mentality. What is that? Well, for one thing, if something breaks, you fix it. Yeah, it's, I fix it. <laughs> it's about being resourceful and doing with what you got. And it's about being a minimalist and realizing, hey, you don't need all this stuff. So you can actually start to declutter your life on land. Step out of the consumption-centered life. Mm -hmm. Stepping away from that as much as you can and focusing more on the natural world around you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be on a boat to do that. And part of that too is about saving money. Nothing cheaper than a cruising sailor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make it into a game. How little can we spend this month? Another thing about the cruiser spirit is be generous, help other people. That's The sailing community truly is a remarkable group of people who are there supporting each other, cheering each other on. So we can do that in everyday life with neighbors, with coworkers, with family. Uh, living in a spirit of generosity is, is definitely the cruising spirit. Yeah. As the wannabe captain with the cruising dream, one thing you can do is you can try and em embody that calm leadership style that eventually you'll need on board and do that in everyday life. And I think the traits of a good captain come down to thorough research decision making, mm -hmm. commitment to a decision, calm reaction when, especially when things aren't necessarily going well, and then also being very empathetic with those that you're working with. Never would I call you crew. You're more like a co-captain and 
more like an admiral. The one thing that this lifestyle teaches you is patience because the ocean and the wind, they're going to do their thing and you need to learn how to roll with that. Yeah, the ocean and the wind, it doesn't care whether you want to get there today or tomorrow or whatever. It's all about adjusting. So in everyday life, even before that cruising commitment is made, you can begin to roll with things. As they say, you can't change the wind, mm -hmm. but you can adjust your sails. And you can do that in everyday life. And that will subliminally encourage her trust and support. And trust is a big thing. Reciprocity. Yeah. Let's go for the comfortable, heavier boat. I know a lot is made of passage times and being able to get away from bad weather and that sort of thing. But I think a, a mistake that you can make if you are not going with the catamaran is if your wife is not totally into it, getting a light boat, a fast boat, something that's Spartan, an X racer, that's what I wanted initially, is probably the, not the right choice. Go for that heavy double ender it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. The Hans Christian. We like to use an ejection handle on any of our adventures, and that is a ticket home on an airplane yeah. at any time. That is in the budget. Are you just plain sick and tired of being on the boat? You can just swipe that card, get the ticket, and get home without any trouble. I did that once when we were in the RV, and I flew back home for a week, and it totally recharged my batteries. It can be really helpful. And last but not least, be calm, be kind, and be patient. I say it just boils down to being chill. <laughs> I think that that is a great trait to have that allows you to deal with all of life's difficulties, whether you're on a boat or you're at work, in traffic. The more chill you can be, the better decision-making you can, you can do, and the better outcomes you're gonna have. Basically, the first time around, I did all of this wrong. <laughs> I grew up with the cruising dream. I mean, from when I was probably six years old, I knew somewhere down deep that I wanted to head off on my own boat. You? <laughs> Not so much? We went to the ocean, we walked the beaches, but I was taught, hey, that's a scary thing out there. Just stay on land. <laughs> So as soon as I had a little money in my pocket and thought I could put this plan into action, what did I do? The completely <laughs> incorrect thing, I focused solely on the boat. Honey, what about this one? And this one's nice and long or has a water maker and look at the solar and the batteries on this one. The boat we bought was full of comforts and doodads and every widget you could imagine. But at that time, I didn't have the experience really to manage the boat. I was overwhelmed with the maintenance and I spent too much time working on the boat and not enough time enjoying the cruise with you. So after that first cruise, that first boat, we went back to work, back to regular life, mm -hmm. to save up in the cruising kitty. And you said, I am never buying another bleeping boat again <laughs> because he wouldn't stop talking about it. It's in my blood. <laughs> but I did change my attitude. I really embodied the things that you see on this list. And the next boat was smaller. It was 33 feet. It wasn't very complicated. It didn't even have refrigeration. Either one of us could have solo sailed that, no problem. It was a very easy boat to handle and so our confidence increased. It probably also helped that by that time we had some experience, we had done some miles, and so I think we were both much more relaxed and you certainly had shed a lot of your fears it seemed. We decided to do this again and go more all in to buy this boat. That meant selling the house, pooling all the resources to make this happen. We still had some decisions we had to make. How big? and how much do we want to spend, and what do we want to do with it? How complicated and comfortable do we want this to be? And we collectively decided on the boat. It wasn't my dream that I then had to go push on you. It was a dream that we shared. And so when we were shopping for this boat, it was really a, a team effort. Yeah. And it's cliche, but it is the team that makes the dream. There are so many boats and slips all over the world, perfectly capable, perfectly safe, but people aren't using them. 
because it really does take a crew of, of two most times to get these boats across any large body of water. That's right. So the team is the engine of your dream. We really want to hear back from you. So if you're having troubles getting your spouse on board with the cruising dream, if you have some other tips that you think we should integrate, please let us know in the comments section. Also with this week's podcast, it's really a reiteration of a lot of these tips and a few more. So join us for that on Stitcher and iTunes. And I always forget the last one. Spotify. Spotify. Can't forget you, Spotify. And if you want more one-on-one -on -one coaching, we can set up a consulting call. Right. Go to sailclarity.com. There's a link there, and we can't wait to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Talk to you. Bye.